YouTube, it's Above Average Cody coming at you with a topic we have not discussed on the channel in quite some time, and that is FOV or field of view here in Halo Infinite. Today, I'm going to aim to answer for you guys what is the best field of view for the game. And to do that, I'm going to show you guys the differences between running higher and lower field of view, and then, of course, how I came to the value that I like to run and which FOV kind of works best for different types of players. So, if you guys didn't already figure it out, there is one really big thing, a heartbreaker statement I'm going to make right off the rip here. There is not one clear best field of view for this game or really any game you're ever going to play and I truly don't think in this game specifically there will ever be one clear-cut field of view that works for everybody there's different people there's different play styles and of course there's different preferences so first off guys we're going to jump into the difference between higher and lower FOV so we're going to go very very extreme here to start so we're in academy training now first off guys i want you to look at the battery on the left side of the screen there all the way to the left so this little object right here guys i want you to pay attention to that all right now we're going to go into settings we're not going to move anything we're going to change the field of view now to the other extreme down to the lowest at 65 field of view guys and then we're going to hit resume and you will notice that battery is completely gone. And we have to move all the way over here to bring it back into vision. And now really quick, now that we have it back into our vision, let's go back and move the FOV up to 120. And now we will resume the game. And you will see it is right, it almost centered in our line of sight here, guys. So what's the main difference between top and bottom field of view, guys? You could see a lot more of the screen at 120 because you're seeing 120 degrees as opposed to only 65 degrees. Um, so other than seeing more screen, guys, this will make objects appear closer and further away. So let's take the blue box here. It looks, you know, a reasonable distance away. Let's call that maybe like, I don't know, 10 feet away. And now let's go back into the field of view slider, turn it down to that 65, and then resume the game. If you made me guess, I'd say it's probably five feet away now. Um, in reality, guys, this is the same amount of distance. The map did not change. It's just how it is appearing on your screen. And of course, guys, these are the extremes. 65 to 120 is a massive jump. I'm just trying to display to you guys the differences in the FOV. So this is another change. Objects will appear much, much closer. And you will see there's a lot of movement to get my reticle from one side or the other. And now let's switch back, go up to... 120 FOV and as you can see it's pretty much the same amount of time to move it but it's not nearly as much distance because again it's appearing closer versus further away and now the final change um visual wise I want to discuss with 120 versus 65 is the speed at which it feels like you're moving you can see how fast this looks if it looks fast it looks good and most importantly it looks like I'm covering a lot of distance. And now if I were to go, of course, you guessed it, down to the 65 degrees, it looks like I am going nowhere. It feels very slow. It looks like I'm basically staring into a fishbowl. And this actually hurts my eyes. And now, guys, let's tackle why anybody would run either max FOV or bottom uh, of the scale FOV. And to do that, guys, I'm going to turn on one enemy bot. I'm going to make sure he's not um, shooting me or throwing grenades at me, though. And now, guys, here we are with the bot on max 120 FOV. Now, keeping in mind all of the knowledge I just gave you guys, he appears pretty far away from where we are. And if we strafe over the target, you can see it's not a lot of aim assist pull. It does not... It's not really like forcing my screen to the left or right for too, too long here strafing over him. Now let's move the FOV back down to the bottom. Target appears bigger. Reticle appears bigger. And the aim assist feels like it is pulling much, much harder. So gameplay wise, guys, aim the FOV can make the aim assist feel like it is pulling greater. You're technically getting the same amount of aim assist over the target, but with the target appearing bigger and appearing closer, it is inevitable that it feels like it does more for you in terms of the overall aim assist pull. And again, guys, it's these are the most extreme examples I can give you, but 
This is why a lot of people, you will hear them say, you get quote unquote, more aim assist at the lower FOV. This isn't necessarily true, but it can make it a lot easier hitting the target at the lower FOV. Because again, a bigger target is always easier to hit. So if you can look past the movement feeling slow, the target seeming like it's right up in your face, guys, it can actually be pretty advantageous for you in a number of gunfights. And those are all of the main differences. Um, some subtle ones, guys. Obviously, you're looking at the reticle. You get a very tiny reticle on high FOV, on low FOV. You get a freaking gigantic reticle. Um, again, because everything scales, um, this is basically to show you like the window of magnetism. Um, because again, if the target appears bigger, they're going to give you a bigger reticle. If the target appears smaller, they're going to give you a smaller reticle. Um, just because everything scales with the field of view, uh, no matter what you run. Now, let's talk a little bit about what FOV I run and why you would want to run one or the other. Now, I personally, you guys know me, I love 97 field of view. I swear by it. I love it. Um, I feel it's really comfortable for me. And I run it lower because of the reasons I said earlier. I have a much easier time tracking enemies in my gunfights with the lower FOV. I consider lower bought below 105 and higher over 105. Um, but that's just what, what works best for me. I've played on 120. I've played on 110. I've played on 100. And just 97 is really the sweet spot. Somebody said to try it. I love it. And I feel I do a good job because... When I'm on 97, guys, in the strafing gunfights, I do I can keep my reticle over the enemy. I'm very steady with my reticle, and I'm able to do a pretty good job just putting in damage to the enemy. Now, when I used to play on 120, which I did not do for long, I was all over the place. I couldn't keep my reticle over the enemy. It can make your sense feel like it's higher than it is, and I was snapping all over the place. And just, I really didn't like it. I had trouble hitting shots, especially with the sniper rifle. So I went back to my 97, stayed there, and I have been on it ever since. Um, now, the higher FOV guys, generally, a faster player will run the 120 FOV. Players like Bound, Renegade, players that push kills, put in a high amount of damage, and are really entry frag type of players will run the higher FOV. This is because you can see a lot more of the screen, guys. If you're a fast player, say you're sprinting into C plat here, if you're on a low FOV, guys, you are not going to see this at all. And I'll show you what I mean really fast here. Go down to the 65 FOV. If I'm just sprinting in, guys, that corner hardly is visible for like any time at all. And I can miss it. I can miss somebody back C here. And it throws off a lot of things that I could be seeing um, if I'm a faster player. Now, if we go up to the 120 FOV, I can see a lot more. It's a lot wider. I can see almost entirely into this corner. So if there's a player sitting here, if I'm playing fast, I can see it quickly snap over and attempt to get that kill. If I'm moving in this way, I can see almost all the way back here on the left to back C. And just, it creates a much larger opportunity for me to check angles. Because again, I can see all the way to Sword Plat here and all the way to the edge of Long Haul Opening, which is something that I would definitely not get if I was on the 65 FOV. I can't see either of them now. Now I have to turn my entire head left and right to be able to see it. So faster players generally will favor the 120 FOV or the extreme high. Now, there are a lot of players that run the low FOV. Um, a lot of beginners or less experienced players with not as good of aim will run the, uh, lower, the lower FOV because it can create, again, a very simple gunfight with really forgiving magnetism when the target is absolutely massive. It is taking up a larger percentage of the screen compared to how much of it is just background. Um, so this would suit more of a slower player, um, doesn't really push enemies as quickly and really just keeps everything in front of them. The enemy 98% of the time is going to be in front of you rather than the fast player that's sprinting forwards, pushing objectives, spinning around. They have enemies next to them, behind them, and just players that push the pace want to see more of the screen. And now I'd say where the majority of the player base lies is somewhere in like the 95 to like 110 range, which is very like middle of the pack. Um, this is where you'll find players like Formal, I believe Formal actually runs 97 FOV. Don't quote me on that. Um, 
Very amazing aim. He's one of the greatest AR players in COD history. He's absolutely insane with the sniper in this game, guys. And he very much keeps the enemies in front of them, but he doesn't want too much of the con of not being able to see a lot of the screen, which is why you'll find the majority of players in the middle around 95 to 110 is it's the best of both worlds, guys. You can see a majority of the screen um, while also getting a decent sized target on your screen for, you know, a reasonable amount of aim assist pull. Um, because again, everything is the same. The, the map isn't getting bigger or smaller. You're not moving any different speed and you're not necessarily getting more or less aim assist. It just scales with how much value you have on the field of view. And back to the original statement I made, guys, there is not one clear best field of view for this game. That is because it comes down to personal preference, what feels comfortable, and as I just went through, what type of player you are. Now, this doesn't mean you can't be a fast player with a low FOV, and this doesn't mean you can't be a slow player with a high FOV. This comes down to the personal preference section, guys. Try out every different FOV, try what your friends think works good, try what the pros think works good, and then most importantly, try to settle on something that works and feels best for you and your gameplay. And I stay at 97 FOV, guys. I never change it. I love it. It's comfortable. It's what I practice on. And I really don't want to throw my muscle memory any curveballs. But there are plenty of people that will get on, practice one FOV, go into game, run a different FOV. There are people that get on, have an off day with the FOV they swear by, and then they'll switch to a different FOV. Um, that's just how they like to play the game. It's what feels comfortable for them, and it's their personal preference. So I guess what I'm really getting at here, guys, is try everything. Um, don't let anybody tell you what one clear-cut value is or is not the best, and here's why. Um, just try to remember what FOV does, what's going to change, and then kind of shape and mold the value and everything else around how you think your play style is and what you think your strengths or weaknesses are, and of course, what you think feels best and uh, helps you play the best in-game. But guys... That's pretty much everything I can think of covering for Field of View. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I will answer any of them. And then finally, subscribe to the channel, guys. We literally upload every single day Halo content. We stream this game five days a week and having an absolute blast with our amazing community here. So hit that sub button, guys. Leave a like on the video, please, so hopefully more players can get a better understanding of Field of View. Um, and then I already mentioned leave a comment. And finally, guys, channel membership. Super thanks. If you'd like support monetarily, um, it helps me out ever so, so much as a creator. But please do not feel like you have to. But already, guys, this was a loaded one. But I hope you have a better understanding of Field of View now. So stay happy, stay healthy, and stay tuned for the next video.